to start then. Um, it's not um, it's not a difficult card. Bit fiddly to start with, but I think it's well worth the effort. And really, what I wanted to say was, what I wanted to show you really was that you don't need hundreds of ink pads. Yes, it's fantastic to have them all. And it's nice to have a really broad spectrum of colours, but you don't need hundreds of ink pads we're using the champagne and roses we're using the layering stencils and i'm also using the embossing folder i'm not actually going to cut out the image to put on my card the image is going to be on my card but i am still going to emboss it but i have used the die for something else i'm also using this fabulous little set now this was a gift with purchase some time ago so it's not it's not available on the website or anything like that um but it's just a cute little set and it, there's two in the set but i'm just using this one today so i'll put the other one to one side and then the basis of my card is the nested scalloped and stitched rectangles so this is what we're making okay this is where we're headed now there is one color on there just one color and i've used my white ink pad as well um, you can do this in any colour. I just particularly like Surf's Up and I think for the bottle it just it just fitted. Everything just fitted really nicely. So you can see I've got some stenciling in the background. If I lift that up you can probably see it a bit more because it is quite faint on the card. I'll try and make it a little bit more obvious today if I can. And then this little sentiment here was from the washi set. You know the um, cute animals and the flowers. So that's one of those sentiments and I've just inked over it with the same colour so that it all ties up. OK, so that's where we're headed. All right. Now, for my base, I used the scalloped rectangle. Now, it's not as big as the scalloped rectangle is because I wanted it a certain size. Um, so you can see here, if I put that with the with the rectangle, you can see it's smaller than the than the scalloped rectangle there and all i've done is put it in my die cutting machine and i've hung the edge of this i've hung from there over the edge of my plates okay so if i show you when you put your plates in if you put your card in and the die on top and then put it so that it hangs over the edge you won't get a line across here and then put it through your die cutting machine to about here and then do the opposite the other end okay so you can adapt these to be any size i've done the same with the rectangle that i wanted to use because what i wanted was the width now there are other dies in lisa's um inventory that are smaller this way but they're also smaller narrow size wise and i wanted the width of this because i wanted it to fit the stencils so again i've done exactly the same and i've cut it to a point turned it round and cut the other end so i've made it the size that i want it to be okay so that's the basis of my card okay and this is what i'm going to stencil onto so i'm going to put my stencil picture in front of me not that i really need it Put that to one side and leave that there for now and put that to one side so i want to make sure that my bottle and my flowers are sort of sitting near the bottom but they're in the middle of this rectangle okay you can see i've got little pen marks on my um mat on my silicon mat <clears throat> so i've already sort of worked out whereabouts i want it okay but if i show you how i did that okay so what i did was took my stencil number one and put it on here okay and then i've used my embossing folder to line up my piece of card because i want this piece of card to sit inside this embossing folder okay and i don't want to crease the card so i need to make sure that it fits inside that embossing folder beautifully but i also need to make sure that my flowers are within that rectangle as well okay so 
you can see there I don't know whether you can actually see it on the screen but that's my stencil and then I've just placed my embossing folder on the top to make sure that all my embossing is within that rectangle okay so I can put my embossing folder to one side for now and I know that my card is in the right place it's also straight and that's why I've used the grid lines rather than the plain side so that I know that my card is straight okay so what I'm going to do before I start is I'm just going to add a little bit of tape because this is the ultimate two and I don't want that card to move and there's no magnet for me to use magnets so that's what I'm doing and I the beauty of the ultimate two is that you can have it any which way you want so on this occasion I'm using it with the pegs down the side rather than at the top because my flowers are facing me then and I'm actually looking at what I'm doing as it will appear, if you know what I mean, rather than working the other way and looking at it from the side. And I just I just like the fact that I can see exactly what I'm doing. Let's start with a stenciling. Now, before I start, I am going to put some white ink down on here. So what I need to do... Yeah, I thought, oh, I won't bother cleaning my stencils. I don't need to. I'm using the same colours. I forgot I was using white. So before I start, I'm going to take that ink off there. Because I'm going down with white in the first instance on this, on this set. Because what I want is the shading on my bottle, like I've got here. And there is some blue on here, but because I've put it on top of white, then it, it's sort of a little bit more muted. Like I showed you um, last week when I used the white under whatever colour I was using. OK, let's make sure it's not wet. So we're going in with our white first. OK, so I'm going down here with my white first. And I'm just literally filling that those apertures with white ink. You're not going to be able to see it. I can't see it either. I can see it on my stencil, but I can't see it on my on my card. But I know it's there. Okay, so we'll just pop the lid on that for now. And then we're going to come in with our surf up. Now, like I said, you can use any colour, any colour to do this. I just particularly like this colour. Now, I'm not going too heavy. What I would rather do with this is build the colour up layer on layer so I, I don't want to I don't want to saturate it with colour so I'm taking a bit of the ink off before I start okay but I'm just going to go into this aperture now with the blue and I'm just going to work it round and I'm going to go heavier on the one side than the other so on this on this right hand side here I am coming in quite a bit heavier okay but not all in one go I'm layering this colour on top of that white I can always go back and add a little bit more colour afterwards if I don't think it's heavy enough but for now I think I'm happy with the amount of colour that I've got on there okay but obviously the beauty of the system is if I need to go back and I want to go back, I can do. i move that piece of kitchen towel because it's hiding all my stencils. OK, so in with number two. Now, again, we're using one colour. So I'm going in with my stencil brush because I've got a lot more smaller um, apertures here. And I always feel that. The smaller the aperture, the smaller the brush you can you can use because you want that ink to just sort of soak into those apertures. So this bit here, I'm going to go in with my blue um, and I'm not going to re-ink it. So all I'm doing is just lightly, you can see where I'm holding the brush, hardly any pressure on here at all. And I'm literally going over the top of that aperture, backwards and forwards, till I'm happy with how much ink there is. So what you have to remember is that's the glass part. The bit underneath is where the liquid is. So you want it to be a different colour. Yeah. 
so we're coming in with number three so i'm just going to go in with a bit of white just on the stem here because i don't want the stem to be overly dark um because obviously i want it to be the same color as this but because it's a smaller aperture because there's a risk of me being a little bit too heavy handed then i just want to add that bit of white in before i start so we're going to come very gently over that stem really quite lightly because you can always add a little bit more ink but once it's down you can't take it away yeah that's good now you see it's a slightly darker color than this bit well it would be wouldn't it because the stem of the glass is thicker than the actual body of the glass so you want this to be a little bit darker than this bit now then i'm coming in here and i'm going really quite dark on here but again i will try and sort of fade it in from the one side because obviously my light is coming from one side so i'm coming in with my color here and i'm going quite heavy because this is the label okay so there's no white underneath here at all and this is where you get the differentiation between your colors so your layers of color um, are going to look different even though it's the same color all right and that's where i think these inks really come into their own because the more you layer them um the better the color so again up the top here we're going reasonably heavy because again this is um part of the label and then at the top where the top of the cork is we're going a little bit darker as well now i can come over here again really quite lightly because i don't want it to be as heavy as the main part of the the glass where the drink is all right so if i take it off and think am i happy i might actually just go a little bit darker on the stem yeah see now you'd think i'd used about three different glues on here now wouldn't you but i haven't i've used one ink pad and i just i just think sometimes it's worth playing and just use challenge yourself to just use one color now i'm not going to add any ink to my brush i'm just going to go in and fill these apertures with the ink that's left on my stencil brush and if i do use any more ink i'm going to take it out of the lid which is where i've taken off ink before okay so i'm not going onto the ink pad where my ink is really quite saturated and heavy i don't want that heavy color i want it to be reasonably light so that you've got a different color blue to the actual little flowers so your stems are a different blue to your flowers okay so on to number five see it's really quick isn't it so on to number five now we're going here again with the blue but what i'm going to do is take a bit of that color off so let's add that down there now i'm going in with my white first use the right brush on to give this a base and then i can add my blue on the top because then that way i am going to get a lighter blue and then the darker blue will be on the top and you'll be able to see the difference <clears throat> so i've put my white down and now i'm coming in with the blue now i'm not going to put any ink on my brush until i've started so let's come in with the blue now remember i'm going on top of white and i'm only using the ink that's on my brush and i'm actually really quite happy with the level of color that i've got there so i'm not going to add any more to my brush and i'm not going to add any more to the stencil now we can come in with the detail and again we've got detail up here so i'm going in with my stencil brush and i'm going reasonably heavy up the top there because i can always go back and add a little bit more now what i am going to do is use my wonder brush rather than my stencil brush just to make sure that i've got a reasonable layer but i don't sort of go too heavy in the middle and you can see that those flowers sit really quite nicely within that rectangle of card so taking that little bit of time to start with 
is well worth it and that way you're not gonna you're not gonna sort of get three quarters of the way through and think my flowers have fallen off the edge i'm going to have to do it again now i might add a little bit more color to this i don't know yet Uh, back of my stencil was dirty never mind don't forget that like what i've just done don't do what i've just done this stencil was on top of another stencil so the colors on the back so i've got color over here hopefully when i've added my background stencil in, you won't see it as much so let's just take that ink off there and I might just go a little bit heavier on those flowers because I really want them to stand out a little bit more than that. Now, if you want to, you could go in with your stencil brush here instead of your wonder brush to give you that depth of colour. But I think I'm reasonably happy with that. OK, so let's just make sure I've got no ink on the back of this one. I don't really think I needed to clean this one, but cleaned all the rest. We might as well carry on. Now this, again, is just pure detail on top of what you've already got. OK, so again, I'm going in really quite deep and I'm using my stencil brush because I want these to, again, stand out on top of the colour that I've already put down. So whilst it looks a lot of ink, what I want is that really deep centre. There we go. So now I'm on to the last one. And this is just putting the final little bit of detail onto that glass and onto the bottom of that bottle. Now you can go as deep or not as you want on there. It's just the effect that you want once, once you've finished. OK, so I really quite like that. I'll leave the top off there. Put the top on my white before I go and put a blue ink a blue brush on top of it now then before I take this off and emboss it what I want to do is add some stenciling in the background okay but obviously I don't want to interfere with what I've already done here so using my die I cut myself a mask out of a post-it note pad okay and I've cut it this is the the top end the sticky end so the sticky end is going to is going to stick down here, not too not too much, obviously, um, but it's just going to be enough to cover that bottle and that glass and those flowers, so that I don't stencil on top of that. Okay. So then I'm just going to put this down, and I might actually move this now, so because I want the stenciling all the way along the top i'm not worried about it being at the bottom i just want it all the way across the top i'm not re-inking my brush okay i'm using whatever ink there is on here if i need to re-ink it i will but i'll probably take the ink out of the lid so this really is just to give it a little bit of interest in the background um but not to detract from what you've already done and again i'm using the surfs up so i'm using exactly the same color and this one's going to show up a little bit more than my first one, probably. But that's fine. I did think that the first one was a little bit, a little bit pale. But I think that's really quite nice. If I put the lid on there, then I can take that off. And you see you've got your stenciling in the background and it hasn't interfered with your, your glass and your bottle. Um, that ink that was on the back of my stencil has spoilt this one a little bit, but never mind. Can't be helped. Twas live. So, my card base, for those that always ask, is a 7x7. Seven seven, okay? Never be afraid of putting a rectangle on a square card base, okay? Because you can always make it look right. I know a lot of people would put a rectangle on a 5x7 card, um, but you don't have to use the same shape of card as your rectangle. You can use a square and it, and it will look equally as beautiful. All right. 
So what I'm going to do first is just run this through my embossing machine. I'm going to line it up. Find a place that you can match. Keep your finger on it and then line everything else up to go along with it. Just spend a little bit of time making sure that you've got it in the right place. Close it up and then emboss it. So let me just run this through, bear with. So now you can see why I took the time to make sure that the card was the right size. Because I can fit it all into my embossing folder and it's not going to crease and it's not going to, um, you know, ruckle up or anything like that. So that's my card. Now you can see the embossing on here. I'm sure you can see how deep the embossing is. I mean, you all know how fabulous Lisa's folders are. But when you look at the embossing, that's the deboss. I'm sure you can probably see it on the on the inked side as well. I'm just waiting for my iPad to catch up. But I just think it stands out beautifully and it really just lifts that bottle and that glass off that card. OK, so this is going on here and I'm going to add some 3D pack. So this is going on here, like so. So let's put that down first. Let's add this onto our card base. Let's make sure it's in the right place. Make sure it's central. Ish. And then that's going down there. Okay. But because it's a rectangle on a square, what I wanted to do was tie it all in so that it doesn't look as obvious that it's a rectangle on a square. Do you know what I mean? So what I thought I would do, so I'll take that out of the way. And using the same stencil, I'm just going to go around the edges with my stencil. Make sure that you don't sort of come too far in. And just basically do a little bit of stenciling both sides as far in as you want to because obviously you're going to hide most of it with your your card base that you've already done do a little bit across the bottom and a little bit across the top because there isn't much of a gap at the top but just enough to sort of make a make a difference okay so you've got your stenciling Round the in the background, and then you can add your card, your card base, your your main bit of your card onto your actual card. So I've already put my already put my pads on here. So this is going down here in the center. Okay, if you wanted to put it off center, you can. It's entirely up to you. And then all you need is your sentiment. Now I am using either one of the washi sentiments. So you could just put on your special day. Or these are from the box set. Okay. So on your wedding day, have the happiest of days, whichever you think. But of course, I want it all to tie in. So these are white. Now I know there's a blue set. In the box kit but it's a different blue and I want it all to tie in so what I'm going to do is just go over these with my brush I think I did it with my stencil brush actually just go over this with my brush so that the background is exactly the same color as the rest of my card and that way it all ties in beautifully and you haven't had to find any other card to sort of cut it out of or print it onto or anything like that. And then all you need to do is just cut yourself a tab that's cut it in half and then put one either end. But leave a tiny little bit with no, um, no 3D pad on it because obviously it's going to hang over here. You could put two layers on if you wanted to, um, so that it's a little bit higher. But I don't think it's going to matter because it's not going to overhang that much. 
I just want it slightly off centre because I just think it looks nicer if you just put it off centre. Okay, so I'm going to go quite near the top, but sort of just off the edge of the just off the edge of that rectangle. I don't think that's quite straight, but I'm not sure it'll come off. Okay, and then just to finish it off, because you know me being me, I just thought that there were some little flat back pearls that Lisa bought out quite a while ago. Just decide how many you want. Go with an odd number. Always do an odd number. And then just add them on. And these are just the perfect colour for this card. It's a little bit uniform really, but never mind. Don't like it that uniform, but it's an odd number. I should have put one over there, but never mind. You see, I only put three on this one. And I thought, oh, let's go a bit heavier on the next one. But it's a little bit too uniform. But, you know, you get the idea, don't you? <clears throat> okay, so there are my cards. And like I said, one colour ink pad. So please don't think... Oh, I haven't got all of Lisa's ink pads. I, I can't use that set because you absolutely can. You could do this in pinks. You could do it in purples. You could do it in greens. Whatever colour you wanted to. So if you wanted to tie it in for, say, a ruby wedding, do it in, in sort of rhubarb jam, shades of rhubarb jam. That would be amazing for a ruby wedding. Um, whatever, you, whatever you want, whatever colour you want to try, but use the white and that way you'll get that that lovely shading um, from using the white and putting the colour on the top like I showed you before. But I just think I just think it's such a fabulous set. So there you go, there's my cards for today. Um, I'll be back on Thursday, all being well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. So I'll see you Thursday, one o'clock. Have a fabulous week and take care of each other. See you soon. Bye now.